In March 2010, Sue Aitken, chairman of Thornbury and Bloom, wrote to the Thornbury Gazette about new trees having been planted in town. The letter was written in the context of public misgivings about the removal of two of the three silver birches in the high street. The two silver birches had been replaced by one Juneberry Robin Hill. And Ms Aitken stated that South Gloucestershire Council had planted another nine trees about town during the winter planting season. She offered to give the details of these trees to anyone who was interested. I was interested, and so I emailed her, requesting those details. A straightforward process, you would think. But quickly, it became complicated. Here is Sue Aitken's response. Note two things. One, that she has a printed sheet with the details ready. And two, she needs my postal address in order to snail mail it to me. This seemed odd, especially for the waste of paper from an organisation that is supposedly environmentally aware. Anyway, I persisted. I gave her my postal address by return email, but expressed surprise about the way I apparently had to receive the information. A surprise based on consideration of efficiency, environmental care and privacy. Suddenly, the information was available electronically. Ms. Aitken claimed that she needed to know who I was. Well, she already knew who I was. But if I wanted to know why she wasted time asking for my postal address, she was not going to tell me. So in public, via the local newspaper, Sue Aitken was apparently happy to release details of the location of trees to anyone. As soon as anyone asked for the details, there was all this intrigue. It was intrigue because she had a valid email address for me, yet she demanded my postal address before she released the information not by post, but by email. So remember now, she claimed to have a printed sheet. So if I was going to receive the information by email, it was reasonable for me to expect either a Word document or a PDF file as an attachment. But the details came as part of the bulk of the email and not as an attachment at all. So I wonder whether there was even a printed sheet in the first place. The need for my postal address had involved deceit. So why not the existence of the sheet also? Here are the details of nine trees, including the new High Street tree. However, Miss Aitken had claimed in her newspaper letter that there were another nine new trees in addition to the one in the High Street. So it was not clear whether there were ten new trees or nine. I pointed this inconsistency out to her and asked for clarification of that and other matters resulting from my search for the trees. Ms Aitken's response was to tell me to contact the council. Well, she really should not act as an unofficial spokesperson for the council via the local paper if she is then not going to handle inquiries which result from that. Of course, I eventually contacted the council, submitting a freedom of information request via the What Do They Know website, and here is the response from Phil Dye, Tree Officer of South Gloucestershire Council. As you can see, Mr Dye claimed that the council had planted not ten new trees, nor nine, but seven. If you look at the detail again, you will see that the list actually is of eight new trees. So how many new trees were planted in the Thornbury during the winter planting season? Seven, eight, nine or ten? As this video progresses, you will see that it is impossible to be assured of the real number, while Sue Aitken and Phil Dye are unable to accomplish the preschool task of counting successfully to 10. Here is Phil Dyer's list of eight trees restated. He used botanical names and I have stated what I believe the common names to be, so any mistakes there are mine. Notice that he claims two new trees in Morton Way and one in Spay Close, but none in Gloucester Road. 
Here is Sue Aitken's list of nine trees. Again, I have suggested the alternative common or botanical names as appropriate. Notice that she claims three new trees in Morton Way and one in Gloucester Road, but none in Spay Close. Also note that she claimed two new hawthorns in Jubilee Way, a leisure trail which skirts around the south and southwest of town, whereas Phil Dye stated Jubilee Drive. They are different locations. So this map shows the locations of the discrepancies between the two lists, and that is not even the end of the discrepancies. The first new tree that I searched for was the Sergeant's Cherry in Gloucester Road, listed only by Sue Aitken. And here it is. In about July of 2009, the Google van went around Thornbury, photographing the area for inclusion in Google Street, a street level view of the surrounds. So I thought I'd check Google Street in order to see the space that the new tree had filled. I was surprised by what I saw. I returned to Gloucester Road three days later to confirm what I had seen on Google Street. Notice the bare patch of soil adjacent to the new tree. Here it is again from a different angle. Yep, there had been a tree there fairly recently. Here it is on Google Street. Notice the large rectangular manhole cover nearby. And here is the new tree slightly further from that manhole cover. I pointed this out to Sue Aitken because I had been looking for additional new trees from the council. Because that was the reasonable assumption that most, if not all people, would draw from her letter rather than expect that the new trees were merely replacements for ones which had been removed during the previous 12 months. In Miss Aitken's slightly huffy reply to me, she claimed that the tree had died without explanation. From the speed and tone of her response, I suspect that she knew that the Gloucester Road cherry was a replacement tree even when she wrote to the Thornbury Gazette. Here's the existing tree back in July 2009 a bit scrawny, but still very much alive. So, a new tree in Gloucester Road, but not an increase in the number of trees. Now, the more intriguing case of Elizabeth Close. Here are the two new Scots Pines. As with Gloucester Road, I returned three days later because again I had noticed something on Google Street. Notice the large bare patches of soil adjacent to the pine saplings.
Here they are again from another angle, looking back towards the street. But that's not all. Further away from the street are two tree stumps. One. Two. Here they are again, this time looking towards the young Scots Pines and the street. So I think that in Elizabeth Close, two trees replaced four. The council admits to removing the two trees from where the Scots Pines now are. They were both ash trees, damaged by storm, apparently. Back to Google Street and face blurred fame for five teenagers. Here are the two storm-damaged trees. Now let's zoom in again. I think that these are the trees which are now stumps. This is the view from the street post felling. Now let's compare. Me, Google, me, Google, me. I believe that there was a reduction of two trees in Elizabeth Close.